Howdy folks and welcome to Coffee and Tools. Yeah, that was three of the uh, three of the busiest machines I've seen this year uh, coming through here for reviews. Besides, uh, we've done a lot of table saws and routers and a lot of other things, but the uh, this year has really been, you know, 3D printers have started to really step up their game with being faster and what have you, but also the lasers are getting more powerful and the CNC machines are getting to the size and price area where consumers can be looking at them for you know having something at home uh, now there's different levels of all of this going on and there was a really good question and I guess we're gonna have to talk about it uh, a lot of people ask uh, out of those three categories you know which one would you buy for the home So let's uh, let's start with just the comparison of the machines themselves and just say that all three of them can be a home hobby or a, a small business they, can, they all three can make money you know depending on your marketing skills and you know imagination <laughs> but all three can do a pretty good job of you know making you a little bit of coin out of the three machines the uh, pricing is a little pricing structure is a little different and again if you're into like a home hobby thing like that you're probably looking at a budget and so we've got to look at price before we look at anything else and it's kind of like you know apples oranges and tomatoes or something here because they all price a little different but we need to take a look at that so let's just talk about that for a second before I get over over to the next thing which will probably ruffle some feathers mm -hmm. well, this past year we've had a lot of a lot of 3d printers in here a lot of lasers and a few CNC machines and in fact I've got another one coming in I think February that I'm really excited about but price that's that's always the big question and also the quality because you know it's it's very related and I would like anyone that wanted to start one of these hobbies I'd like to see them buy a machine that's going to give them a good experience so that's where my price point is so on your budget a 3d printer you can look at a 3d printer and you can spend as little as between two and three hundred and you're gonna buy a decent machine a very decent machine and it's going to be able to last you for years and put out a lot of projects just just at the hobby level you know and if you want to go into say jobs or even a little bit of business type level that machine is going to take you there and that's great you know I think the 3d printers are probably the best of the three they're the best value for the buck really there's just no question about it but also the material costs and things so we'll come back to that let's go over to lasers uh, you can buy cheap lasers same thing but to get a good experience from a laser or have a decent laser that has enough power and enough size that will give you the ability to do what you want to do with engraving or making some large signs and things you're looking uh, around six hundred dollars and you're not going to have feel like you've got much more machine than you know the 3d printer <laughs> but that's the difference it's it's a big jump in price and where all the money is because there's been a lot of complaints in the industry about it that i've been getting is why do they cost so much and uh, the answer is simple you know yeah it's the laser that's where all the money gets tied up on them and uh, so that's you know and there's also some, some other limitations and again I want to get into all that a little bit later on right now we're just talking about bang for the buck you know something to buy that uh, will give you a good experience within that hobby level and the CNC machine unfortunately is going to hit that's going to hit a little high right now. I'm really looking to see if they'll come down a bit, but to have decent power to be able to cut and chop up some hardwoods and uh, run metals and things like that, you're going to have to look at some money. And the CNC machines out of those three are going to hit the highest prices. You're going to be looking, uh, the, I think it was the long mill, uh, I really like that one, uh, but between $13 to $1,600 range for the machine. Let's talk about the material cost of all three machines and just do a little bit of comparison on that too. Let's start with a 3D printer and after that initial investment, the only other thing you're gonna be buying is filament. And filament like this one here, this is gray, this is a kilogram, which is pretty heavy. This will make a lot of projects and this can be purchased for around 20 to $23 uh, with delivery from like Amazon or eBay or wherever you decide to buy your filament from. You can also go to the companies themselves. They offer some very good quality filaments. This is PLA. This is your basic plastic. So it's just a basic one. This is a rubber filament here. It's, it's uh, like a soft, like a 
well, uh, like a tire on a car. <laughs> it's, it's, it's rubber, you know, it's TPU. And I had a project going on earlier this week. But anyway, the thing is, it's very cheap. The material is very really cheap. Now, the software is the same thing. The software, uh, you can get free downloads from Thingiverse all day long. There's, you know, millions of uh, printable things in there that are free downloads that you can put into what we call a slicer. You'll need what they call Ultima Cura. That's your slicer. Uh, CNC machine has sort of a G-code sender thing, but it's like a slicer as well. It's the same idea, sort of. And But anyway, for the 3D printer, the Ultima Cura, for example, is a free program. You download it and you use it to run your 3D printer with. If you want to go further, you can get something like Fusion 360, which is what I use, and you can design your own product and that's free as long as you don't get into a business or a commercial situation, but as a hobby, you know, it's a free program. The slicer is free. So the only other thing you really look at, you're looking at is the, uh, the filament. And for $20, you can make tons of projects off of these things. So I think in terms of uh, budget, again, after the initial cost of the machine and buying a little bit of filament, you're on your way. You know, you can do, you can make lots of stuff. So I think it's a, at that point, at the price point, I think the 3D printer has all of them. You know, it, it has all of it, all the answers, and there's lots of software, lots of printable stuff out there that's uh, free off the internet. Or if you want to pay, you can get into some really, you know, ornate stuff. But again, you don't have to be a designer or a CAD guy or something like that. You, you just need to learn a little bit of software and you're on your way. You can run your 3D printer. So that takes care of the 3D printer. Let's talk about lasers. I guess we'll call this the second category or lasers. And this particular type, and it's just not Creality, it's like all this type, or what they call open air lasers. And they're not safe. There's a lot of issues I have with them. Number one is these glasses that are supplied with the lasers, they have no uh, classification or safety codes or anything else with them. So you assume that the manufacturer is sending these things out and that they are rated to properly protect your eyes from lasers. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the problem. If somebody walks into the room or something even, these things can hurt your eyes. They are a dangerous piece of equipment. And also there's radiation that comes off a laser, a working laser. And this is only a 10 watt laser. The radiation levels are you know, they're, they're unknown, but it's open air. So it's not a safe machine to use. And they're expensive. This, this machine here, I can't remember the price on it, but it's, it's in that five to $600 range. And all your lasers that are of this size are gonna be in that price range. And uh, if you have Apple or Mac, like I like to use, you're gonna have to buy software. There is no, there is no free lunch on this one and the fact you're going to have to buy light burn and unfortunately there's not a lot of flavors out there or anything you have to buy light burn there's really no place to go so i'm totally going to throw lasers under the bus that's it's a uh, a hobby that unless you really want it and you're willing to take the chances on some of the safety problems involved with this uh, they can be a very dangerous machine uh, Hopefully you never get involved like, you know, someone kicking the door open to your light while it's running. You walk in with a laser. Uh, also, there's fumes coming off these things. Uh, I won't even get into fumes because, yeah, that's another, another area. But uh, an engraving laser like this should be uh, contained out in the shop somewhere and also lock up everybody and animals and everything away from them. And then I don't know how good your eyes are going to be after using a cheap pair of these glasses that are, you know, come with the open air. I'll give you a link. Uh, Makers Muse Angus down there in Australia did a really good show about the dangers of lasers and he really covered a lot of points. And uh, in fact, since that show, uh, I have refused to take any more lasers in. We have, I guess, four or five of them in the shop here right now even, and we're messing with them. But the problem is uh, I have two that are enclosed. And the enclosed lasers, I do prefer those because at least you can control the, the fumes. Uh, you don't have to necessarily worry about you know exposure with the glasses. And also the radiation is more contained because it's a well-enclosed laser. And we'll actually be getting back to that machine just a little bit. Uh, in about mid-February or so, we're going to be talking a little more about that particular machine. And again, it's expensive. 
That machine is approximately $900 retail, but it offers a lot of safety compared to this, but it doesn't have the size of the big open air. So, so there's a bunch of uh, safety trade-offs for the lasers. And because of it all, I've decided that we will be staying away from lasers in general for from now on, unless things change. But right now, they're not a safe machine to have around. I don't think they're good for the general public to have at this point in time because I think to some degree the companies that make these things, it's like they don't care, you know, they just don't care. So we're going to throw the lasers under the bus <laughs> yeah. and let's talk about CNC machines and just get off of this because I really am not happy about the software situation, not happy about the, uh, there's not a lot of availability without paying and paying and paying for uh, sketches and drawings and things that you can run through a laser. Uh, you also have to learn Lightburn, which I find it to be a very frustrating, very glitchy program, and you have to pay for it. So it's just, you know, negative, negative, negative about lasers. Not happy about this at all situation. And like I say, that's one of the reasons why I've just said we're going to have to commit to ourselves to just, no. I love 3D printing, but this laser thing is really just, it's just something that, yeah, you're on your own. I'm not going to help you with it. <laughs> let's do CNC. <laughs> Yeah, so let's talk about the CNC machines. They've been around the longest, and there is a lot of uh, cheap ones coming out. It looks to me like the cheap market on CNC is really starting to get crazy out there. But they, a good machine for a good experience, I still believe you know, you're looking at quite a bit of money. Uh, let's say at least maybe $1,000 or more. And one of the things you want to look at with a CNC machine is the physical size is going to limit you to what you can do, obviously, but also the motors on them. And I see some of them come out with some really good router motors that are high speed, that have a lot of power, that can do the job. And then I'm seeing a lot of these cheap machines with the small motors that are almost a Dremel tool. And it's like, that's not really going to handle much. And you're going to have problems, especially with hardwood, or you're going to be limited. Uh, if you get into metals and things, you're going to have all kinds of issues, break a lot of bits and things. So, you know, but the CNC machine is the sort of on the other end of that spectrum between the three because it's expensive and the hardwood of course costs money and if you screw something up and you have to throw it away it would be easy to blow a twenty dollar piece of hardwood out the out the door with you know maple or something like that but uh, the software is fabulous there is free software there is paid software and some of the paid software is not that overpriced so it's not uh, it's not a bad choice but you're going to have to learn some things with a CNC machine that say you wouldn't have to necessarily deal with with a, uh, a 3D printer or even a laser. Uh, the CNC machine is probably, I'm going to call it the most uh, software learning curve of all three of them just for basic modeling and stuff, not for, you know, getting into any real heavy detailed work, but also, and it's very limited. Uh, before I forget, it's also limited to what you can uh, say free downloads or something. There's uh, there is some out there, but there isn't uh, nothing like Thingiverse with 3D printing where you have you know a millions of different uh, print uh, items that you can simply download for free off the website, throw it in the uh, slicer, put it in the printer, and run it. You know it's like that's that's pretty cool. It's one of the reasons I really like the 3D, the 3D printers. They're very inexpensive now, and they've got some pretty good quality going. The CNC machines, I'm excited about them because they are getting better priced, I guess. But I'm worried about features and options and you know size, that sort of thing, compatibility. And I've said, and I will say it again, February, we've got one that's going to be coming in here. It should be here in the next few weeks, but it will be shown in the middle of February. We already have a date slotted for it and everything, and I'm really excited about it because I think it's going to be in that $1,000 range, but I'm really not sure. Uh, the company might surprise me or surprise all of us with a, a great price, but I'm looking forward to uh, putting some stuff in that I designed and going ahead and uh, running it, and it's going to be, I think it'll be a really great choice. Now, so really for the three machines, if you're looking for a budget situation, I don't think there's no way you can beat a 3d printer you just can't you know it's it is low cost easy to use easy to figure it out you know easy software to work with and millions of designs that you can download for free so really that's my choice you know if, if i had to choose between the three that's where i would go right now 
if I had a lot of, uh, if my budget wasn't limited, uh, I would lean towards a CNC machine for my wood, especially for woodworking and stuff. Man, a CNC machine, come on. You know, that's like, they, they are awesome. They are awesome, you know. But that would be my choices. And uh, we're going to stop here uh, because I just wanted to get this out because I've been getting, hitting, getting hit with a lot of people questioning me over the differences in the three machines and why the prices and which one, you know, maybe should I be looking at or should I consider any of these three for a hobby, you know, at home. You know, I didn't want to get into the business and commercial aspect too much of it because that's another yeah, that's a story for another day, right? Hey, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring the notice bell. And uh, be kind to each other, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're out of here. Over and out. <laughs>